FPL is back. What is up everyone, how's it going? Hope we're keeping well and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. The game has finally been released, we can finally start making our first teams. So in this video I'm going to be showing you my first draft ahead of the game week 1 deadline as a manager with a top 10k rank history. We've got that big question looming over ahead, whether or not we're going to go with Erling Haaland with that 50 million price tag. So let's see how we're shaping up. We've lots to discuss, let's get into the video. So before we get into today's video, let's hit a like goal of 60 likes on this video. So head on down there, drop the video a like. If you are watching this and you're not subscribed, or if you are new to the channel, first off, hello, welcome to the channel. But head on down there, click subscribe and support the channel. We're on the road to 10k subs. Hopefully we can get there by the end of the season. So I really would appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, click subscribe and support the channel. So let's get straight into the team and starting off on goals, I've gone with the goalkeeper pairing of Robert Sanchez of Chelsea and Matt Turner of Nottingham Forest. Starting with Turner on the bench there, he's just a cheap enabler as a 4 million goalkeeper. He looks like he won't be playing any minutes for Nottingham Forest, so he's not going to be playing any minutes in my team, but he's just on the bench there to save some money. I was considering going with two 4.5 million goalkeepers and rotating them, but we all know how that plays out. I don't want to give myself the headache every week, so I've just gone with Sanchez in goals for Chelsea. He looks to be Enzo Moresca's first choice goalkeeper because of his distribution skills compared to Petrovic so we're going to have a keep a close eye on him in pre-season and hopefully he gets the nod if he does seem to get the nod if it looks like he is going to be the first choice goalkeeper he's going to be a very popular pick amongst FPL managers if you ignore the game week one fixture against Man City Chelsea have a great run of fixtures up until game week seven where we should see some clean sheets for Chelsea so that's why he's in the team so moving on to my defence, we'll start off my three starting defenders ahead of the game week one deadline and I've opted for two premium defenders in Verdiol and Trent Alexander-Arnold and then Mikalenko of Everton slots in beside these two as my four and a half million defender. We'll start off with Verdiol and there's two reasons why he's in the team. First off, he is my football lookalike so it's going to be very difficult to leave him out of the team and then secondly, he was an absolute cheat code last season playing in that advanced role for Man City. Looking at Man City's fixtures at the start of the season, they're okay. Starting off with Chelsea in game week one, then the Varsal and Newcastle in their first six fixtures. But then looking at game week two against Ipswich, West Ham and Brentford in three and four. These definitely scream clean sheet potentials and attack and return potential for Verdiol if he is playing in that advanced role. So that's why he's in the team. Similar to Verdiol, we've got my Trent Alexander-Arnold on the focus of his attack and threat. And Liverpool have a great start to the Premier League campaign, starting off with the newly promoted Ipswich in game week one, and then a lovely run of fixtures up until game week seven, albeit if you ignore that Man United fixture in game week three. There are two good of fixtures to ignore, and that's why Trent is in the team. But if I was trying to decide between the two of Guardiola and Trent, I'd probably lean, lean towards Trent just because City have Chelsea, Arsenal, and Newcastle in their first six fixtures, and Liverpool's fixtures are a lot better compared to City. I'm ha I am happy enough to pay the two premium prices for the two defenders as I do see some good returns to them to start the campaign. So fingers crossed we do see some clean sheets and some attacking returns from Man City and Liverpool. So with Verdi all and Trent Alexander-Arnold pretty much locked into my team, we then move on to my first major decision of the season and that's having a look at the 4.5 million defenders. There's plenty of good options in that price range. Dan Byrne of Newcastle, Consa of Aston Villa, Guehi and Anderson of Crystal Palace all having good starts to the season. But for now, I'm looking towards Mikalenko of Everton Everton have a lovely start to their Premier League campaign up until game week 14 a lovely run of fixtures albeit if you ignore game week 2 and game week 4 when they face Spurs and Aston Villa but that's when you move to my bench and you, you see Barco and Howard Bellis Barco of Brighton and Howard Bellis of Southampton Southampton face Nottingham Forest in game week 2 at home and then Brighton face Ipswich in game week 4 so I can sub these two players into the team when Everton have those poor fixtures. Looking at Barco of Brighton, he's a bit of a hidden gem at the moment. S opinion looks set to be sidelined until September. So if it looks like in pre-season that Barco is going to be starting for Brighton, he's going to be a very popular pick and should be a nice enabler for your team. So moving on to my midfield, we'll start off with a player that has to be in every single FPL team. It's the Egyptian king and the FPL king himself, Mo Salah. Liverpool's fixtures are too good to ignore to start the campaign. You could arguably captain him in four out of their first five game weeks. Maybe even five out of the first five game weeks if you want to captain him in that Man United fixture also. But yeah, I'm expecting Salah to start off with a bang, especially with that new haircut. And I'm expecting a good haul from him in that Ipswich game in the early kickoff on the 17th of August. Aberta Eze is another player who's pretty much cemented into my game week one team. With Michael Elise off to Bayern Munich, Eze is going to have to step up and be the main man for Crystal Palace. He's priced at 7 million in the game and he is on penalty duties. I'm in a nice run of fixtures for Crystal Palace to so start the Premier League up against Brentford, West Ham and Leicester in their first four game weeks. I'm expecting a few returns from him, especially with him being on penalties. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him priced at 7.2, 7.3 million after that Leicester game in game week four. With Mo Salah and Eze pretty much cemented into my game week one team. 
that leads us on to another tough decision on who we're going to fit in for last two midfielder spots. We spoke about Chelsea's fixtures with Sanchez and goals earlier on in the video, and that's why I'm looking towards having a Chelsea attacker with those favourable fixtures. I was looking to have Cole Palmer in the team, but he's now rose in price to 10.5 million. That's an increase of 5.5 million compared to his 5 million price tag last season. It was definitely warranted though after he had that outrageous season for the Blues. And that's why I'm now looking towards Nkunku. Priced at 6.5 million in the game, 4 million cheaper than Cole Palmer. But with Nkunku in the team, I'm going to be heavily reliant on him staying fit. He only started two games last season, scored three goals from two starts. But hopefully he can pick up some form in the preseason and some fitness. And if he does, he'll definitely be the best budget enabler in the game. Gibbs White completes my four-man midfield and Nottingham Forest have a good start to the season up against Southampton, Bournemouth and Wolves in their first three games. And with Gibbs White being on penalties for Forest, he could be the perfect differential to start the season and see me up the ranks. If all fails with Gibbs White and Nkunku, I can look towards Garnacho, Matoma, Sobosly, Gross, maybe even Smith Rowe if he does get that move to Crystal Palace and maybe even Morgan Rodgers of Aston Villa if it looks like he's going to get a starting place with Villa. But for now, it's Nkunku and Gibbs White as my two six and a half million midfielders. On to the bench then, Harry Winks is a four and a half million starting player for Leicester and that's why he makes the bench. He can just be there for appearance points if needed and that's why he makes the squad. Erling Haaland, Alexander Izak and Joe Pedro complete my 15-man squad and we're going to start off with the elephant in the room, that 15 million price tag on Erling Haaland. A lot of managers going without him, a lot of managers going with him to start the season. He's only owned by less than 33% of managers in the game, so that's a far cry from his 80% ownership last year in the game. It's definitely a good thing, it gives managers a decision to make. Me, myself, in my own opinions, I think it's easier to go with Haaland than go without him. If he does well against Chelsea in game week one, if he scores, he could easily be 15.1, 15.2 million ahead of that. Ipswich fixture at home and he's obviously the clear standout for the captaincy in game week two against Ipswich and if he doesn't start off the season well it's easier to downgrade him to Watkins maybe even Havertz of Arsenal but if, if he starts off the season well and I don't have him I'm going to at least need two transfers to get him into the into the team with that 50 million price tag so it saves me the headache I think just starting off the season with Haaland and then yeah go from there and hopefully he does he does punish the managers who don't own him in the game but Callum Wilson a major doubt for Newcastle's opener against Southampton in game week one Alexander Izak is a no-brainer and he earns a spot in the team. 21 goals and 4 assists for the Swede last year. He was an absolute joy to own since I brought him in on that Game Week 30 wildcard last season. And he's on penalties and Newcastle have a great run of fixtures up until Game Week 8. Although they do have Spurs and Man City in these opening 8 fixtures. But Izak proved last year he can return in any game. And with Wilson a major doubt, that's why he makes the team. Joe Pedro completes my start in 11 and he looks to be one of the best 5.5 million strikers in the game. He is on penalties for Brighton, however he is set to miss out on the pre-season tour of Japan in what's said to be a rib injury for the Brazilian. Adam Armstrong is another shout at 5.5 million for Southampton. Armstrong is in good form at the moment, he scored twice in Southampton's last pre-season game. So I'll be keeping a close eye on Pedro's fitness in the lead up to game week 1. And if it looks like he's going to miss out in that game week 1 fixture, I can always look towards Armstrong for that 5.5 million forward slot. The game week one deadline, less than a month away, I'm happy to announce the renewal of the FPL Air Prize League. The league is free to enter, all you have to do is make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and then make sure you're following me on Twitter and Instagram. The code is on screen there, make sure you get entered, make sure you're subbed to the channel and make sure you're following me on my socials for a valid entry and best of luck ahead of the new season. Well, that's how my current Game Week 1 team is shaping up ahead of the deadline next month. Let me know in the comments below what you make of my team, if there's any changes that you would make. There are obviously a few big omissions from the team. No Arsenal defensive cover, no Bukayo Saka, no Cole Palmer, no Youngman Son and no Ollie Watkins up front. It's very difficult to fit all the big players in compared to last year where it was slightly easier and everyone's team did look the same. With the price structure this year, it's definitely a good thing as it gives FPL managers more of a decision to make on who to have in the team. With this Game Week 1 team, as of now, I'm happy with how it looks so far. I've got Haaland, I've got Salah, I've got Trent, I've got Vardy all. So there are some big names in the team, but that's how I'm shaping up. If you made it to the end of this video, please give it a like, drop a comment below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you can see, there's a new look on the channel, so head on down there. Let me know what you make of the new graphics. There's a lot of work that went on behind the scenes in pre-season to give the channel an updated, fresh new look. So please head on down there. Let me know what you make of the, the new graphics. And if you haven't done so already, head on down there, click subscribe. We're on the road to 10k subs and with your support, you can help me get there. And I really would appreciate it if you could head on down there, click subscribe and support the channel. There's plenty of pre-season content coming your way over the next month or so, so make sure you have the notifications on also. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.